All right guys, so the deal with this video is basically gonna be, I'm gonna do a complete teardown of this jet ski. Uh, get the engine out, pretty much everything except for like the pump and the drive shaft and stuff. So we're gonna get everything out of here, get this thing ready to get a rebuild and then get back in this jet ski, hopefully in a timely fashion, considering I have all the crank seals for it and all the gaskets. So it should be pretty easy. Pull it out, get it downstairs, tear it down, uh, seals, gaskets, and put it back in. So I'm just gonna do a straight no edit video of every single step that takes to get this thing to the engine getting out of it because I know when I started it was definitely hard to find information on these things and some people would just kind of cut things out of their videos and stuff in different angles I would have liked to see or different explanations so I'm gonna do a completely raw tear down of this thing if I mess stuff up if I whatever it's all going in and it might be a series of videos we'll just see how long it goes and I'll just kind of be like brain brain puking all over, kind of just giving as much advice about these different things as I go, and you'll get a little bit of a better look at the setup of the flat deck if you're newer or, you know, if I didn't really explain something at some point. So it'll probably be a little bit quiet. You can feel free to speed up the video to uh, whatever you want or skip around if you find different parts helpful. I'll try to title different videos if there's multiple on what I do in the video. And we're just going to get this thing cracking and hopefully get this engine rebuilt fairly quickly and get it all back together because I, of course, messed up the red one again. So that's all got to come back apart. So we're got to get this thing ready so I at least have something to ride for the beginning of the season. So that's kind of the deal right now. And we're going to get, we'll just get started. So there might be, you know, some, some silent moments and stuff, but... It's more for the information than the entertainment, considering I don't really edit much, because I don't really have any good software. If you edit and you watch this video, uh, let me know what you use for software. So. And hopefully this camera angle works too. I'm, I don't really have anyone to help me with anything, so. Basically what we're gonna do first, I'm just gonna kind of talk through it just in case you can't see what I'm doing. So first we're just gonna take out these two straps on the gas tank. Um, that one. We're gonna try to stay halfway organized with all of this. Okay, so straps out. <clears throat> so we still got some gas in here. I just threw a little bit of fuel stabilizer in it. I don't really worry about it. These things are pretty, pretty sturdy, pretty stout. So not really too much to worry about. I mean, some people like to drain their tank. You can do what you want. I personally don't worry about it. Just put a little fuel stabilizer in there and run it through. That's what I do. Or, yeah, and then, you know, leave it for the season, or for the winter, I mean. And so what I like to do with these is just, like, throw a plastic bag in there with a little, a little divot in it, I guess. Push it in there and then put it out around. You can put a rubber band around it, and that's going to keep anything from getting in there. Or you can throw a gas cap on it, whatever, whatever suits you. So now that we did that, we'll probably just quick get the coupler off. Oops. So we're just gonna take the coupler off of the, the stinger of the pipe that felt actually a little bit loose, but it's fine. Um, so we're gonna take that off. And once that's all good, you can grab whatever this is. How do 
looks like maybe a 10. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, it's an 11, okay. So we're gonna go, just take, we're gonna loosen these uh, exhaust clamps so that we can pull off the stinger and get that all detached from everything so it's not all connected anymore. And undo all of these for the water fittings. And then what I like to do personally is I like to pull these back, get it off of the off of the fitting and it comes off a little bit easier than some of the cooling line I have and then I like to take this and just get it snug cuz it usually run or from being pressed or tightened down there it leaves a little mark in it so you can just kind of get it just tight enough to where it's not going to come off and you're not going to lose it so that's what I like to do in in that situation and yeah, so once you do that, you can pretty much, hopefully, I don't know. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a pain probably getting this thing off. Because I do run this thing pretty hot. So I'd be willing to bet that this thing's pretty well attached. I think it actually would be easier to just take it off of the water box. So we're going to try that. That isn't really working all that well, so let's just try to get this out then. Oh, those are just straight sockets. So most of my experience with these things is with my red, my red ski, so I've never really had to mess with uh, taking a full pipe off. I only installed this one. So this is gonna be a little bit of a trial and error thing and anything all fit together with these couplers can be a real, a real pain to deal with. So it, it might take a second here, but you'll see the, the best method probably to get it off if you don't know. <laughs> if you don't know like I do, or if you don't know, like I also don't know, we're going to find out. What we can do here is probably get this mount undone too, right here, this exhaust that mounts up to the manifold. Probably be a good idea to get that off, although that thing's a little bit of a pain too, I think. Let's see.
So one issue that I'm pretty sure that I ran into last time is when I was trying to get the lower, like this engine mount to fit, because I got the Roz ones, and they wouldn't really fit the with the pipe, like the hardware I got with the Roz lock washer was like way too tight, so the bottom of the pipe would hit the engine mount and wouldn't fit. So. What I had to do was like take this mount on and off like probably a good five or six times and like had to keep adjusting and taking different things out and swapping out spacers on the engine mount and stuff and ground down the head of the fastener on top to just get this thing to fit. So the last time that I ended up tightening this thing in, I'm pretty sure that I may have cross-threaded it the, on the manifold so that's one thing to be pretty careful of <laughs> is that when you have to keep on threading these things in and out a million times you definitely start to run the real risk of stripping one of these things out because they are pretty delicate threads on that aluminum so that's something to definitely be careful of as well. Because stripping out these things and having to helicoil them or someone might just buy a new one, which I would completely understand because that's probably what I'm gonna do if I end up finding out this thing is stripped out. Because I just, it's just sometimes you just, you just realize it's not worth dealing with it. And maybe I'll deal with it at a later date and like drill it for dual cooling, but for the most part, I just think it's probably more worthwhile just to spend the money than have to worry about it right away. Especially when I'm in a little bit of a rush like this and I just kind of get to the point where I don't really feel like messing with certain tedious things when I've got other more important things to work on if you know what I mean. Okay, so that's out. Hopefully we can somehow get this thing out. Somehow. <clears throat> oh man. That's not really cooperating. So now that that's off of the head pipe, we're going to quick pop that off to give, my, to give myself a little bit of room to actually be able to work and get this uh, full, the rest of the pipe out the stinger and the main body of the pipe and such. So we're just going to quick get that out. I got stuff everywhere. Okay, let's do that. And then, okay, so another good little tip with these types of pipes, it is they come with studs in the top of the manifold and I, that's fairly obvious because that's, uh, I mean, oh, whoops. That might not be too obvious, I guess, because what some people do and how you might have gotten your pipe, if you bought one, if yours didn't have studs in it, or the person was like lazy, or they got it and they didn't have studs, or whatever the case may be, 
they may have put screws straight through this into the manifold and that's like literally probably the best way to strip out your manifold because when you're t pulling on that thing with a screw it can be really really harsh on those threads in there so if you do get one of these and it does not have studs in it like you're about to see definitely fix that before you install it because if you strip one of these things out, that won't be a fun time at all. So, um, where's my little, oh there it is. Mm. So as you can see here, this thing has, has studs in it. So if you do have studs, if that part's all good, then the next thing that you're gonna wanna check is if the studs are fully into the manifold because sometimes you'll buy them second hand and the guy before you, he took them off or something or maybe he had it painted or when he, oh, that's nasty. Yeah, this thing was running a little rich, that's for sure. We're gonna need to definitely rectify that jetting because this thing is kind of nasty, not gonna lie. Like if you can see, there's some, ah, you can't see, this camera isn't that good. But there's, whoops, probably don't do that. But there's, um, it was running really rich and you can kind of see a little bit of like oily residue in there. And my, cause my low was just, it was super rich. And I didn't have jets at the time. And so I was just kind of like, eh, don't care. I'll just, 